are you single? Have you ever dated anyone from your gold diggers videos? How do you feel about the rumors about the Prince family breaking up? What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I am back with another video for you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed, and amazing day today. If you have not subscribed to the Cryer family, you already know what to do. Turn that bell on. That way, every time I drop a video on the Cryer family, all of you guys will be notified every time I drop a video. Also, guys, I will be putting a picture right here or right here if you want to see more Damien Cryer to the Cryer family Facebook page. Over on the Cryer family Facebook page, I am dropping one video every single day, seven days of the week. And let's just say that's where I'm at. A lot of people have still been asking me the same questions. Mr. Cryer, since you're on Facebook more now, will you still be uploading on the Cryer family? As you guys can see, I've been trying to be a little bit more consistent on the Cryer family. Um, it took me a long time to build up this channel to get it where it's at today. Um, so I'm not going to just abandon my ship. And you know, yes, it's true. I have lost a lot of family members on the Cryer family this year and last year. But I, you know, I used to think it was because of a lot of the crazy stuff that was going on, a lot of the drama and stuff that happened on my channel. But as I really looked at things and did some researching, I realized that a lot of people who was watching me two or three years ago when my videos were getting into hundreds of thousands of views over here, a lot of those people have actually grown up in college, moved on with their life, doing different things. And a lot of people who used to watch the YouTube stuff really is into different stuff like TikToks and Reels. And so I realized that it wasn't just the drama of why I lost so much support. It was because people started doing different things. And again, when you're 13 years old watching those videos and stuff, it's different because you're young then, it's entertaining to you. But as you grow on to grow older into your 15, 16, and 17, you kind of lose interest in that stuff. You start dating, you get girlfriends, you go on to college, and you just don't really watch stuff that you used to watch. Whereas YouTube versus Facebook, or should I say Facebook versus YouTube, I found that on Facebook, I have a larger audience there that, that loves content, I guess. I don't know what happened, but it's like it switched over. Like, like I don't, I mean, it's kind of weird to explain, but I found out that the audience that I have on Facebook, they are like, now I did get some of my followers who came from the prior family on YouTube over to Facebook to support me, but a lot of the people who support me on the Cryer Family Facebook page, believe it or not, those people never even heard of me. So that lets you know how big the world is. Those people over there have never even heard of me. And so I just stepped out on faith and I decided to take my, you know, take a leap of faith and try something different on a different platform. And when I first started doing Facebook, I didn't think that it was gonna work for me. I had no idea no idea that it was going to be like this. I mean, I didn't see that coming. So that's where I'm at now, guys. I'm going to be there. I mean, I'm there to stay, guys. I mean, if you guys knew what I knew, y'all would understand why. But I do like the Facebook better because, like I said, um, they are really there to 100% support me and watch every video that I drop. And I get like thousands of comments per video. And I, sometimes I can't read all of them. So people, they will just start emailing me or they'll send me a message on Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger is something that I usually never really mess with, but I guess now that I'm on Facebook, instead of my IG notifications going off, now it's my Facebook notifications that's constantly going off. It's crazy, but I love it. Um, and to be honest with you guys, 
I'm not going to ever stop doing the Crier Family. I'm going to try to still bring you guys as much as content as I can on the Crier Family because I still, again, I look at the videos that I dropped recently and I still get those four, five thousand, six thousand views. The people who still support me. So thank you all for that. I appreciate that. And I do understand that some of you guys left me comments in the comment section saying, Mr. Cryer, I, but I don't have Facebook. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Um, just know that if you ever do get Facebook and you ever download the app, it's real simple. Once you get the Facebook, you just go to the little search engine thing and just type in the Cryer family and it should pop right up. You'll see like a yellow thumbnail in the background. Again, I'm gonna put a clip right here or right here in the video so you guys will be able to easily find me over there on Facebook. And once again, thank you for the ones who still support the Cryer family, man. It is still much appreciated. If I wasn't still getting the four or 5,000 views over here, I probably still wouldn't be uploading over here consistently. But I've been trying to be consistent, you know, every day for the last week for you guys over here. And I'm gonna try to keep that going for you guys. So I also appreciate all of the wonderful comments and engagements on yesterday's silly video, making an Easter egg smoothie, guys. That right there was hilarious. But I'm gonna tell you guys the real honest truth. That smoothie was fire. I was not capping, it was fire. What I should have did, even though I showed you guys the ingredients that I put into the smoothie, the smoothie plus the two eggs, what I should have did was still put the ingredients in my description box in that video. So I do apologize for that. A few people had questions about that. They emailed me. They were like, what was the name of the fruit that you used? Um, can you go back and put it in your description? So I ended up emailing them that today. So anyway, guys, why we are here today, we are going to be doing a video today of most commonly asked questions. Um, some of the most commonly asked questions that I get, whether it's on my email, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook Messenger. So some of the, so I have actually jotted down 10 of those most commonly asked questions. And that's what this video is about today. After this video, guys, don't forget to like the video, comment on the video, man. And let me know what you guys think of the video. So anyway, without further ado, we're gonna jump right into this video. Now I'm gonna try to do this without my glasses on. For some reason, man, I guess, I don't know. I always was one of those guys who bragged about I had 20-20 vision. Coming up, I seen guys my age in my 20s, my teens that wore glasses. And I'm like, man, I'm never gonna wear glasses ever. Now that I'm older, I feel like that I need to wear my reading glasses when I'm reading. So, but I don't like wearing my reading glasses when I'm actually vlogging for some reason. I guess it makes me not, you know, it makes me feel like that I'm older when I wear the glasses, even though I am older, but I wear that with a badge of honor. But anyway, enough of all that noise. Okay. Commonly asked questions that's asked of your boy, Damien Cryer. Number one. Someone asks, what are my triggers? Now, they weren't really specific when they asked what was my triggers, but I'm gonna just assume, like, what are some things that kind of make me upset? So I can honestly say, one of my triggers that really makes me upset I mean, it irks me right to this day. And it always will, it's never gonna change. One of the things that really triggers me is if I'm at a grocery store or something, now we know most stores have automation doors that open automatically, but for the stores, gas station, grocery stores, and stuff that don't have the automated doors, you have to pull the door and open it. So one thing that really triggers me is when I pull the door and open the door, if I'm exiting the building or entering the building, is if I see somebody that's close to the door, I will hold the door for them so they can get in. They don't even say thank you or anything. Like, I just held the door open for you. You can't even say, hey, thanks, man, I appreciate that. They just walk past you as if you're disgusting or like you did something wrong. Another thing that triggers me is if I'm at a grocery store or in the line or something and paying for the items that I've recently purchased, and they tell me how much my total is, I hand them the money, and instead of them handing the money back to me, they like drop it in my hand. That's one of the, those things right there trigger me. Now, on a personal note, on a personal note of one thing that really triggers me is 
when people make it feel like people will try to make it seem like that you really did something bad to them. And then they will do everything they can to convince the people who's willing to listen to them that you actually did something to them when really you ain't did nothing to them at all. That's one of the things that triggers me, guys. So if you guys have a trigger that you guys want to share with me, leave in the comment section down below. But most importantly, the part about when you hold the door open for somebody and they don't even say thank you. I think that is like, that's a real trigger for me because it's like you're going out of your way to go above and beyond to do things that you don't even have to do. You don't have to hold the door. You can walk out the door and just let that mother just close right in their face and just keep it moving. But when you go above and beyond and do something and they can't even say just a few words of thank you. But I also gotta take into consideration, you don't know what happened to that person today. You don't know what they went through today. They could have just recently lost a loved one five minutes before they walked into that gas station. You don't know if they're angry right now uh, or what they're going through because we never know what people are truly going through in life, man. We really don't. But anyway, moving on to number two of most commonly questioned is asked. Number two, what's my likes and dislikes? That is a really, a really good question. I have, I have a few, like, like most people in the world. Um, my likes is, I'm, I'm not a perfect per person, but I like immaculate. I like to be clean wherever I go. Like my home, I keep my home clean. Um, I clean when it's not necessary for me to clean because it just, it gives me something to do if I'm sitting around the house. Um, one thing that I really hate is rude people. I hate people who always come off as rude. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if you like, okay, let me give you guys like an example. If someone called me right now and, and I said, hello, they said, hey, how you doing? And I'd be like, hey, I'm good, how are you? And they'll say something like, oh, why you gotta say it all like that? Sound like somebody's having a very bad day. That's one thing that I really hate. Um, but, um, some of my dislikes are basically like, you know, again, I'm not a perfect person. I'm not. I can't stand a person that just don't give a damn. Like, if you don't give a damn about nothing, you're definitely not gonna give a damn about me. And I wanna surround myself with good, genuine people. Um, that's not a whole lot to ask for. There's a lot of good, genuine people out here in the world, in the universe. There's some that's still being produced to this day. Um, but one thing that I dislike the most is filth. I can't stand clutter. For some reason, I just can't stand clutter. Me, all of my brothers and my sister, we are the same way. If I go to one of my relatives' house right now, they are extremely immaculately clean. And so it's something that I inherited from my mom. It's something about me that's never gonna change. And sometimes my neatness actually pisses people off. I've had someone tell me this was so many years ago. They called me a neat freak. They said I was a neat freak. And so I took that as a bad thing at the time, but as time went on, I realized that being a neat freak is not really a bad thing. Another thing that I dislike, whoo, it just irks me to the freaking core. I hate when I'm driving. Oops. What was this? What do you want? I'm sorry guys, my apologies. What is this message? One thing that I really hate the most is when I'm driving down the street, got my little music on, it's a nice day outside, windows cracked about that much. You know, it's a beautiful day. And a car just flies right in front of me because they're in a rush just to get to the same exact street light and get stopped. That's one of the things I hate. Crazy drivers, they fly around you Zooming through traffic, flying, they going crazy, almost hitting all these cars. Just a few hundred feet up the road, they get stopped at the same light. And you know what I do now? When I have a situation like that happen where somebody is just rude and just flies past me, without turning their turn signal on, literally knocks me off the road, they get to the light, so you know what I do now? I pull up and I get to the other lane and I look over at them when I get stopped at that light and I just look at them and I just shake my head just like this because you literally killed all these people 
took all these innocent people's lives out, just took them off the map, literally killed everybody, just to get to the same exact light that we all got stopped at. That is one of the things that I dislike the most. Another thing, one of my dislikes, one of my dislikes that really, really irks me a lot is my teeth. One of, you know, it's my teeth. Um, that is a huge dislike for me um, because it's like, I feel like your face, your smile, your eyes, that's your resume. It tells people a lot about you when they approach you and talk to you. So my teeth is like an insecurity for me, but that's actually about to change here. Um, let me not say too much. But yeah, so I do have some likes and dislikes, but I think I have more dislikes than I have likes. It's like sometimes it's the littlest things that could just like really irk me. Like, give you guys like another example before we move on to number three. You walk into a store and you got your stuff all laid out on the conveyor belt, you know, so they can ring you up or whatever. And then when you get to the part where you have to pay the money, you know, the first thing you say is, hey, how are you? And they don't say anything to you. Your total was $50.29. And you're sitting there looking at them like, whoa, I just spoke to you. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys ever had that happen to you and did you say anything to them about it or anything. I know that that's kind of small and petty, but to me, that's just one of the things that, oh, I hate it. Moving on to number three of the most commonly questioned asked of me. Number three, do you get depressed living alone? The answer to that question is at times I do. At times I do. I think for me, living alone, oh my God, I hit my vape, guys. Not a cigarette, it's a vape. Your boy is making some changes, but it ain't gonna happen overnight. So, do I get depressed living alone? I have my moments, and I think for me, like, I've always been like a family man who's always been family oriented. Um, I come from a family where my brothers are married, they have children, they all live in the same household. And I was once that person at one time where I had a family and I lived in a household with everyone. And I think that like, after I started living by myself, it was a new experience for me. You know, it was a very, very new experience for me, but I will honestly say it was a hurter for me because I found myself alone. I found myself going to sleep every night by myself. I found myself not having anyone to, you know, talk to at night, watch television with, you know, to come out the shower and have somebody there with me so we can relax together and watch television. Yes. So I think dating all the way back to 2017 when I started living on my own in Indiana, I had to get my own apartment stuff. You know, it was a change for me. And you know, I have tried the living in thing um, since living in Indiana by myself. And I don't know what it is. It's like, for some reason, I want it to work, but it just doesn't work for me. So maybe I'm one of those guys who's meant to live by himself or whatever. And, you know, me being older, I know that my gap is starting to close. You know, I know that my gap is closing. I'm getting older, my looks are starting to deteriorate, and that's what happens with time. You know, it happens with time and age. But it's one of the things that I have come to accept um, all the way around, good or bad. I think for me, the most important thing for me right now is my health. But the most scariest thing for me right now is like if something happened to me while I was here by myself, like no one would know until days later. Um, speaking like the worst case scenario, I'm not like the worst case scenario. If something were to happen to me and you know, nobody knew it until days later. There was days where I went without dropping videos and stuff. Uh, I think it was one time I went almost a week or almost two weeks without uploading a video and People were really, really concerned. I was going through a time of depression in my life where I was really stressed out a lot and I wasn't answering anyone's calls and stuff. And people instantly thought something was wrong because I wasn't uploading any videos. I wasn't posting on my IG. 
I wasn't posting on my community wall. I was just going through depression. And sometimes when I go through depression, I kind of distance myself from everyone. Like I don't really talk to no one. And the reason why is because I find that whatever I'm going through, I could cause that to rub off on someone else. Someone could simply, you know, ask me how I'm doing and I probably would kind of like be snappy, but not on purpose. So that's one of the downsides about living alone. But um, living alone, it also gives me time to think. Some of the smartest people in the world, some of the richest people in the world became what they are and who they are today because they had time to think. They had time to spend time to themselves without any distractions or interruptions. But does it bother me to this day to live alone? At times it does. I'm gonna just say yes to that. But every day is not the same. I have days where I wake up and I'm just so freaking joyful and I'm ready to go. Then I have days where I wake up and say, what am I gonna do today? Like, you know, what, what am I gonna do today? So, Sometimes it is kind of depressing living alone, but again, it has its rewards, it has its ups and it has its downs. But for the most part, it hasn't been too, too bad. Number four, man, this just took me out right here. Number four took me completely off the map. And this was one of the most commonly asked questions. And I'm gonna shoot it to you guys straight, man. Now, you know, I was going to just avoid this question right here because it's like, <laughs> I just kept seeing it pop up, guys. Let's just put it this way. One of the most commonly questions asked of me is, have you ever dated anyone from your gold diggers videos? Guys, listen. If I've dated anyone from a gold diggers video, you guys think that would be all over the internet right now? That wouldn't be exposed all over the internet? Absolutely not. Nor will I either. Absolutely not. I have never dated anyone from a gold diggers video. Nor will I date anyone from a gold diggers video in the future. That's not my thing. I'm not interested. So the answer to that question is no. And it's a question that a lot of people have been asking. I've even seen comments um, on other videos where people said, maybe he should date one of those girls. Maybe he should do this. Maybe he should do that. Absolutely not, guys. I'm good, I'm good. So the answer to that question that everybody's been wanting to know is absolutely not. And even if I tried to hide something like that, even if I was and I tried to hide something like that, that would be exposed all over the freaking internet, guys. Literally, it would be exposed all over the internet. So, moving on. Number five. Oh, wow. This is one right here. Everybody's been hitting me up, DMing me about even though it's been a few days ago, it's pertaining to the Prince family, Damien and Bianca. How do you feel about the rumors about the Prince family breaking up? All I'm gonna say is this right here, man. Some things you just have to laugh at, man. You know, as content creators, we are always trying to find different ways to come up with content. How do I feel about the rumors about the Prince family breakup? Me personally, I mean, that's my family. Like literally we talk every single day. Like we're around each other like every single day. So something like that to me is just insane, insane. And it's crazy because I had to go back and figure out where did the rumor come from? singing a song on TikTok. But, you know, here's the thing right here. They made a video about, you know, building a new house. You didn't see no reactions about that. You seen no reactions about that. Yet, the kids' birthday parties, nobody's reacting to that. Like, nobody's reacting to that. They went on a vacation, a couple cruises, 
Nobody reacted to that. You know why nobody reacted to that? Because it was all positive content. People only want the negative stuff. And that's the reason why I told you guys a while back, I'm through with all the drama. I'm almost at a point to where I don't care who comes out with a video about Damien Cryer this, Damien Cryer that. The next video that they're gonna get from me is a prank. That's my response. You have to move differently. They always say, if you want different results, you have to try different things. If you don't try different things, guess what? You're gonna keep getting the same results. So the rumors about how I feel about the rumors of the Prince family, we all laughed. Literally, we all just laughed. People are gonna always try to create drama where there is no drama at whatsoever. People living good, living their best life, happy, taking care of their kids, raising their family. So that's how I feel about it. It's funny, literally. Some things you gotta just laugh at, bro. Number six, would you do uh, most commonly questions is asked of me? Number six, will you do pranks again on the Cryer family? Well, you guys never know with me. You guys never know with me. I'm one of those type of guys, man, you know, I like to do my due diligence. I like to sit back and observe. I don't want to do something too fast and uh, something that's going to wind up being extremely bad. Um, obviously, I can't do pranks on myself. Obviously, I can't prank myself. I mean, I could, but that's not going to be entertaining. Will pranks come back to the prior family one day? I'm quite sure that they will, guys, but there's a time for everything. You know, right now is, you know, right now I'm just chilling, man. I'm chilling. Uh, I got a lot going on as far as like on my other platform that I'm at now. And that's where my main focus is at. One day, pranks will come back, but I would never tell you guys when they're coming. You'll just get the notification. You know, you guys already know what I say. You tell the plan, finish it. You plan to fail. I that took too many L's, so I do not plan on failing. So, Let's just say yes, sometime soon here, I guess. One of the most commonly questions that's asked of me, and I don't know why, because it's something I used to be quick to run to the internet and blurt out. Commonly question that's asked of me is, are you single? You guys remember a time I used to get mad and you know, during breakups and I do a Q and A, yes, I'm single. You know, I don't, I decided, man, not to make announcements like that. You know, um, as far as like, there's a lot of things in my life right now that I would rather just keep personal and just let people see what they see. And right now, the best way for me to answer that question is, you know, you guys, y'all see me doing my videos, y'all see me doing this video, and pretty much, you know, I would be a fool to come on here and say, yes, I'm single. And then next week, y'all see something different because I have confused so many people with saying I'm single. So now I just pretty much stay away from it. This is a question that I did not want to answer or go nowhere near it, but it was a comedy question that was asked of me and that's why I brought it up. Um, but let's just say um, I'm pretty content with my current situation. Um, I'm pretty content with my current situation. As you guys can tell or may notice, I have been working on me, you know, um, just trying to be the best person that I can be. Someone asked, what type of things you do daily? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry about that. What type of things do I do daily is one of the most commonly asked questions. A lot of things I do like Sometimes, now this might be kind of weird to you guys. I know it's gonna be a little weird, but I'm gonna say it because this is the honest truth. Even though I have a washing machine and dryer in my house, once a week, I go to the laundromat. Yes, I go to the laundromat because it gets me out the house. Another thing that I do daily is I enjoy going to the park. We had some rainy days recently here in Houston, which I couldn't go to the park. The weather's been a little up and down. And I'm one of those people, I get sick really easy, like as far as like a, a, a cold or something like that. So I try not to go outside when it's like 50 and 60 degrees because this weather down here is bipolar. And like I said, I get the flu and get cough colds extremely easy. But I do enjoy going to the park. Um, I recently 
went up to Galveston. Um, I like to go to aquariums. Uh, I recently visited a museum um, in Galveston. Um, I recently visited the um, NASA space station. Um, that was up towards Galveston. Um, about that, guys, I had lost my battery. So, again, um, so there's a lot of things that I like to do daily, but I don't always make that a reality. A lot of stuff, like, again, I like to walk. I do. I like to exercise. Um, that's, I think that that's one of the most important things for a human being to do is always get out and do something. If you're not really working out at a gym or physically doing exercise, if you're out walking around and doing stuff, that is very, very important. Um, I do love animals. I do enjoy going to the zoo. Again, I don't mean it's like a broken record. I definitely enjoy going to the park. Um, I like meeting new people. Um, I have met some new people, but like, like I have met some new couples. Um, everybody that I come across as far as like meeting new people, um, they like to go out and drink and stuff. I've been invited to go out, but that's really not my cup of tea. Um, I find it easier just kind of staying in my own lane, if that makes sense. I don't want to get too comfortable around too many people. I don't mind meeting new people. And this is even before the YouTube and all that other stuff. I've always been like that my whole life. Like even my relatives back home, they know how I am. I don't really hang out with people like that too much. I find it better just to stay to yourself. You get too close to people, you start knowing their personal business, and then eventually they start knowing your personal business. And I like to keep my business to myself. I just find it a lot easier that way. So number nine was a question that several people have asked me, which is a very common question is asked. What advice, what advice would you give someone wanting to do social media? And after that, we have one more left. I'm gonna try to keep this short because I could like go on and on with this question. One thing that I would say to people who's wanting to do social media. First and foremost, um, have a plan. Have some type of plan written out, methodically or strategically thought out, wrote out, typed out, whatever. The first thing doing social media, you wanna have a plan. The second thing is you don't wanna have too many people involved because people, if you don't know a lot about social media, for the average person, they do know one thing about social media. You can definitely make money on social media. You can earn revenue. One thing that I've learned about social media and advice that I would give is when you do social media, don't get too many people involved. I remember my very, 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 very first video that I had did with someone. This was like back in 2016 or 2017. The video had got like 200 views on it. Literally, this is a true story. One of my videos had got like 200, maybe 250 views on it. And the person that I did the video with, it was a guy that I, that I used to work with. The video did 200 and something views. He instantly thought that we made thousands of dollars off the video that did 200 views. Now mind you, in 2016 and 2017, this channel was not even monetized. It wasn't eligible for monetization. I probably only had like 600, subscribers on this channel. So, like, this person was calling me every day. Man, how much money did we make off the video? Like, based off 200 views. So, if you do start social media, you don't want to get too many people involved. Um, and then, most importantly, when you do come up with a successful idea, plan, or strategy, or how you want to do your channel, you don't want to tell too many people because somebody might take that idea and run with it. You got to remember as content creators, people are always looking for different ways to come up with different ideas to do different content. So, I mean, social media, like it's like the stock market. You have your good days and then you have your bad days. But one thing that I will honestly say about social media, don't get too many people involved when you first start it off. Now, there's nothing wrong at all with working with people. But what I'm saying is starting off a channel. 
you don't want to get too many people involved. If you got a boyfriend or girlfriend or vice versa, you have a significant other or you have just kids, make your channel surrounded by family stuff. You know, like there is so much stuff that you can do that's pertaining to family. Some people may think that some of that content is boring and don't really watch it, but it will eventually pick up. I give you guys a perfect example. You know, if I dropped a video right now and it was some drama with me or one of my exes or something, the videos is gonna run numbers. But if you do family content, some regular stuff, the video is most likely not gonna run any numbers. But if you get those 300 views off that video, that means that that's 300 people is genuinely there for that content. That's the audience that you want to attract. There is nothing worse than sitting on a platform with 10 million subscribers and you only get 50 views a video. The reason why I sit with 10 million because there was something going on at one point in time that interests the people. So you wanna do stuff that's gonna interest the people. So if you start off a YouTube channel or any social media and you're only getting 300 views a video, you have to really look at that as a plus because that's 300 people who's interested in that type of content. And you wanna stay on that track because it's eventually gonna grow. Now, I will say this, social media is not for everyone. I mean, 10 years ago, I didn't know I was gonna be doing what I'm doing today. I didn't know that I was gonna be doing YouTube. I didn't know I was gonna be, I mean, you couldn't have told me a year ago that I was gonna be booming on Facebook, going viral, going crazy. I would have never believed that. So, social media is tricky. You have to really want it. The other thing that I will tell people about doing social media is most important, if you're gonna do social media, you have to stay consistent. If you stay consistent, you will get it. If you be, stay persistent, you will keep getting it. But you can't just drop a video and then six months later, drop another video. No one's gonna really care. Once you give them you, they're gonna want more of you. Don't just give them a part of you and then go away. So that's what I would tell people who's wanting to start off on social media like I said keep your circle small man you know keep your ideas to yourself um, and just don't bring too many people around in that space because you know I would say this if a lot of people are not going to be there with you until you become successful they don't want to believe in you in the beginning when you first start doing it no one's going to believe in you I told you guys a story a while back when I worked in Indiana at the steel mill them cats didn't believe in me. I was walking in the break room at break time. They was whispering about me. Then they'll stop talking. I was hearing rumors like, oh, he ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't going to work with this. You know, so they're not gonna believe into you, believe in you until you really start making it. Once you get a name for yourself and they see what you're actually doing, the type of money that you're bringing in, then that's when everybody wants to be a part of it. So if they wasn't trying to be a part of it then, definitely keep that same energy. Don't let them be a part of it now. I'm not saying turn your back on nobody, but what I am saying is, if they didn't want to be a part of your success then, they're only here because you're successful now. You definitely don't want those people in your space, bro. Last and not least, number 10, what are some of your addictions? One of my main addictions is I love chocolate. I love chocolate candy. I can't stop eating chocolate candy. I love chocolate candy. Another one of my addictions is I love to cuddle. Obviously, I'm not cuddling now, but it's been a quite while, a while since I've actually cuddled. That's one of my things right there. I am addicted to cuddling. I am like a huge bear. I love to cuddle. I love to play. But aside to that, chocolate is one of my main addictions. Um, another thing that I am so addicted to is obviously it's no secret i stay up late i'm up every night till two or three in the morning uh, i'm watching a movie sometimes it's hard to sleep but it's not for any particular reason it's always been that way with me so i'm definitely addicted to staying up late at night eating candy i will walk back and forth to the refrigerator getting chips off the refrigerator this is just the example right here guys yes eating candy all night long More chocolate candy, eating candy all night long. That is my addiction, guys. That is my addiction. Now, I do have other addictions, um, like, mm, well, we'll just save that 
benediction for another video. But guys, listen, I love you guys. I appreciate you watching this video, man. If you made it this far, I definitely appreciate it. Don't forget, go on over, follow your boy on the Cryer Family Facebook page. Today, we just hit 513K. Thank you all for that, man. But anyway, I love you guys. Until next time, it's your boy Damian Cryer. And I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Peace.